Personally, I don't really like the Polestar 2. It just looks weird. Doesn't make sense in my mind. But, 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 the Polestar 3. Now, this is a car that is getting me kind of excited. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. And welcome back, everyone else. How are you all? I hope you're doing really well. Hope you're having an amazing week. And frankly, there's been like in the last 24 hours, an absolute explosion. I'm just looking at all the tabs I've got open on my computer right now, an absolute insane explosion in the EV world. I mean, there's so much going on right now. Wow, I haven't seen this many news articles in the space of 24 hours for, I don't know, a couple of months, crazy. So I'm trying to make the videos to let you guys know what is going on. And this is what is going on. Volvo, you know, Polestar, Volvo, Geely, Geely, okay, Geely are about to release the Polestar 3. And this thing is very, very sexy. That's what I think. Anyway, let me know if you agree in the comments below. It's going to debut in two weeks on the 12th of October. It's going to have up to 510 horsepower and an optional performance pack. This will give it 671 pound feet of torque and a dual motor all wheel drive powertrain. That excites me. Now, Polestar will unveil its first SUV, the Polestar 3, at a launch event on the 12th of October. We already have an idea kind of of what it looks like, and I think it looks sensational. Polestar CEO Thomas Ingen Lath and Polestar's head of design, Maximilian Missoni, what a name that is, Maximilian, will host the event that will be live streamed globally at 1 p.m., kind of like an Apple event or a Tesla event, providing consumers a glimpse of the brand's debut in the SUV market. So for those of you who want to see that live stream, 1 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. You can clearly see how much Polestar value the US market more than any other market. Accompanying the announcement are new details about the Polestar 3, which will be built on a new all-electric technology base developed by and shared with Volvo Cars, the SPA2 platform. The electric SUV will feature the latest in high-tech components, including a centralized core computing from NVIDIA, which was necessary for this car to be sold in China, because if you don't have the latest technology in China, consumers don't want to buy it. And a long list of advanced driving systems and safety systems from Volvo and leading industry suppliers such as Zen Siact, Luminar, and Smart Eye. Likely, it will feature the same LiDAR sensor as the Volvo EX90, which is its kind of sister vehicle. But the EX90 will be a fair bit bigger than that, of course, similar size to the XC90, which is a big electric SUV. And I'm really excited to see the XC90 electric, which is what I prefer to call it as, because there's not many cars available right now in that size in, well, most countries around the world. So a big electric SUV. I mean, I know a lot of you don't like those kinds of cars, but the truth is we need those kinds of cars because a lot of people want to buy them. Now at launch, each version of the Polestar 3 will feature a rear biased dual motor powertrain. I like the fact that it's rear biased with electric torque vectoring via a dual clutch system on the rear electric motor. The vehicle will also feature an adaptive dual chamber air suspension and active dampers as standard, which will allow the Polestar 3 to switch between comfort and firm suspension dynamics while adjusting to road conditions once every two milliseconds. That's some pretty quick adjustments. I think it could be a very comfortable car to drive. This is what Thomas Ingenlath, Polestar CEO, said. It's this instant ability to transform from a comfortable cruiser to a sharp, agile performance car in less than the blink of an eye that makes the Polestar 3 special as an electric performance SUV. It also benefits from a low center of gravity and wide track for ultimate stability and an exciting feeling behind the wheel. Now, Polestar is promising excellent driving dynamics, especially with the optional performance pack that provides the Polestar 3 with, like I said before, 510 horsepower and 671 pound feet of torque, which is 900 and eight newton meters of torque, along with the Pulsar engineered chassis tuning for the active dampers and air suspension. Now, I think these claims are probably legit because Polestar, I mean, all of you know, I'm sure Polestar, where they came from, they were the tuning house for Volvo. So they're kind of like the M division for BMW or basically AMG for Mercedes. Now that's what they were before until they became a standalone car brand. But clearly a lot of the engineers did come over from that original Polestar division to work on the new Polestar, which is of course electric only car manufacturers. Driving range is incredibly impressive. Polestar previously mentioned a WLTP range of 372 miles, that's 600 kilometers. So real world driving on that kind of range, you're probably looking at about 550 kilometers. This thing will have a pretty impressive range. Polestar says this new model of car will define the SUV for the electric age through its proportions, stance, and its aerodynamics. 
Now, one of the things I'm not so sure about on this car, it's going to have features from signature Swedish gold details, such as valve caps, seat belts, and a laser etched interior light strip. I'm not sure about the gold stuff, like gold. Uh, gold is not really my thing, period. I mean, maybe some of you like to have gold in your cars, but anyway. The Polestar 3 will be the brand's first model in the US at Volvo Cars Plant in South Carolina, but it'll also be built in China for the local market there. Production will start in early 2023 in both countries. This car is going to come, basically, it's a global car coming to Australia, New Zealand, the US, of course, they're making the car there, Canada, Europe, the UK, China. Yeah. It's going, I mean, not everywhere, but we know it's going to those Western places. And of course, China's not the West, but to China as well. And of course, a number of other Asian car markets too. Now, one of the things we've learned in the last 12 hours is that all versions of the Polestar 3 will get all-wheel drive. Price for the car, what's it going to be? While we estimate it's going to start at US $75,000, it won't be cheap but we don't know for sure they're just estimates that are going around by the media right now how big is it the polestar 3 is actually a pretty big car it's bigger than a tesla model y it's 4.9 meters long 192.9 inches has a three meter wheelbase that's 117.7 inches and according to auto week who have gotten a hold of the polestar 3 specifications and other details it is 1.97 meters wide or 77.6 inches. So it's basically one size up from a Tesla Model Y. Now, apparently it's going to have 484 liters of cargo volume, which is quite small. I'm not sure why it's such a small boot. I and mean, that's uh, remarkably small, much smaller than the boot in a Tesla Model Y. Maybe the interior space for the occupants is quite large. Now, speaking of performance, what performance times are there? Well, it looks like 0 to 100, 0 to 62 miles an hour will come in five seconds for the long range version. The performance version will do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 4.7 seconds. Top speed is 210 kilometers an hour. So what about battery size and charging? Well, apparently the battery size is going to be absolutely massive. It looks as though it's going to be a 111 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give the performance version what we said before, 348 miles of range, and the long range version will have 379 miles of range, which is 610 kilometers. Now that's the version I would personally be most interested in. Now the 111 kilowatt hour pack, which is it's very, very big, is in fact even bigger than the long range battery pack in a Tesla Model S or a Model X. And it's going to have 800 volts, or at least that's what the industry believes. One other feature it's going to have, which is really impressive, is bi-directional vehicle to grid compatibility, featuring the company's state of the art battery tech. This means it will be able to power home appliances, charging electronics, and top up other EVs using this energy stored in its battery pack. Now the power output for bi-directional charging is going to be set at 20 kilowatt, which is actually a really, really impressive feature. And that should mean Vehicle to grid compatibility means, you know, you can use this vehicle to pay all your house if you need to, right? That's a big benefit. Now, one of the things I found strange about this car is even though it's quite a big vehicle, it doesn't look big. The designers, whoever designed this, did a great job at making the proportions look smaller than they actually are. Now, let me know if you agree or disagree with that comment. Let me know if you like or you dislike this car in the comment section below. Let me know if, be if you'd be interested in buying one of these. I mean, obviously they're not cheap. I think price in Australia would be about $100,000, about $75,000 in the US, but it's a big EV. It looks impressive. And that technology is seriously next level. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.